today I'm introducing this little board. This is an RC navigation light system for RC airplanes, UAVs in general, or even cars, boats, whatever you want to use it for. But the main function is to produce realistic lighting system, just like you have in real commercial airplanes. So you have the strobe light, you have the positioning lights, beacon, and you also have landing lights. So you have four output channels available for the lights. They're predefined to be used for strobe, beacon, auxiliary one that can be used for positioning lights, and auxiliary two that can be used for landing lights. And you can connect the system to your receiver using two different channels to control the lights remotely with switches. But if you don't want to use the PWM inputs off your board, just activate the manual mode and it will keep working as long as it has power. The customization is almost without limits. On the flashing patterns, you can simulate the strophes of any airplane that you like by changing the code, or you can even do it right on the board itself with the push buttons and potentiometer to change between three different predefined strophe patterns or to change the timing of these flashes independently, including the beacon light. You can save these modifications and the next time you power up the board, the configuration will be the same. And all that can be changed in the source code in the Arduino IDE software, so you can program in your own patterns. The board will come with the firmware pre-installed, so you don't have to worry about burning the bootloader and all of that. But if you want to change the code and upload it back again to the board, you'll need the Arduino IDE, which is a free software and a mini USB cable. Here's the good news. After the first batch of these boards is shipped, I'm going to give away the code. I'm sure the community will do tons of versions of the firmware to adapt to their needs. Same with the schematics. I'm going to give it all away, so you'll be able to build your own if you want. And maybe someone will improve the design and share it back to the community. Also, I'm pretty sure someone will take this idea and use it for commercial purposes. If that's so, please consider leaving a donation for all the work that has been put into this project. Link in the description below. Why am I giving away all this project for everyone, I hear you ask? Well, I can't keep up with this after the microchip shortage and all the time and money I spend on this project. So I prefer just to let the community improve the design and let the project get a life of its own. The board was originally designed to connect these LEDs directly to it. They are normally 3 or 1 watt LEDs. The designer of the board recommended me to connect the LEDs in series but the more LEDs we connect to one channel, the more voltage we need to power them. So I found that connecting them in parallel works just fine. Before continuing with a demonstration of how this works, I'm making this video to announce the pre-order phase of this product. So right now you can go to joyplanes.com and pre-order the board. I'm just going to make 50 of these in the first batch and they will start shipping in about one month and a half after you make the purchase. I'm not sure if I'll do another batch after this one, so this might be the first and last time I'm going to sell this product in particular. That's why I'm giving away the code and the schematics for free. With that said, get ready for the demonstration. Disclaimer, the board will still have things to improve, but it works perfectly enough to be used in your model airplane, as I'm going to show you right now. When you buy it, the package will include the board with the firmware installed, four JST mail connectors, pin headers, a 10K potentiometer, six white LEDs without heatsink for strobe use, two white LEDs with heatsink with lenses to be used as landing lights, two red without heatsink for beacon lights, one red and one green LEDs with heatsink for positioning lights, two male-to-male -male servo leads of 20 centimeters, and you have the option to choose between no extension wires, 2 meter silicon extension wires or 4 meters silicon extension wires. As you can see, the whole thing is going to be DIY, so you have to solder the components the way you want. And after recording this video, I also decided to include these extra LEDs. These are just the standard 5mm LEDs, but they will come in handy if you need to add more lights. The only two things you'll need and are not included is the battery connector that you have to solder to the input of the board or whatever other way you think to power this board, and the mini USB cable that you want to use to upload code to your board. So let's begin with the demonstration of how this board works. I'm going to start by showing you how to set the modes and change the settings 
within the board. So you don't have to program it. You don't have to do anything because the firmware already allows you to modify settings with these push buttons and the button shometer. So I already have soldered the, um, the pin headers and the button shometer and the, the battery connector in this case. So I'm going to power it up and show you how this works. So here we go. And right away you can see it will start working. So it works perfectly. But if you want to change, um, you know, the blinking time of this, um, uh, this is the strobe or even the beacon light, you can do so by using these buttons and the button shometer. So these buttons up here, we have save, select and mode. So if we press mode once, right, like that, we're going to uh, enter in the strobe mode. So in this mode, we will be able to change the, the strobe settings. If we press it again, we will be able to change the beacon settings. And that's it. So you toggle between them. And if you hold it down, you know, it will enter in manual mode. So it's the default mode. If you press once then, um, we are in this uh, stroke mode, so we can change that. But to start changing it, we have to press the select mode uh, so we can uh, choose the different patterns. As you can see, we have a different pattern here. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you see? The next one is one, two, one, two, three. So it's one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay. Perfect. And the next one is simply two flashes. One, two, one, two, one, two. And that's it. So you can choose whichever you want. And then in this, pressing this button, we'll save that selection. So that's it. It's already saved. But what about uh, if you want to change the timing and stuff? Well, I'm going to choose actually another one with three flashes. That one there. And now I'm going to hold down select button, right? And with the strobe uh, light, you only can ch um, change the, the timing or, you know, the space between each of the flashes. So by moving the button shometer, you'll see, you'll see it now takes a lot longer to flash or to go to the next cycle. And if I rotate it in the opposite direction, it will take a lot less. See, so you can choose that or this, whatever. I'm, I'm going to choose something more realistic, maybe something like that. And then so, uh, I'll press select once because this is blinking, telling me that I'm controlling the, the settings of the timing. So if I press select once, uh, stop that, but I have to press save. So I, I'll save the settings, right? So it will remember it forever. Now I'm going to choose the settings for the beacon. So I'm going to press mode, right? And then again, same thing, I'm going to hold down select. And as you can see, you can control the on time of the LED. So you can bring it down or up. So if I want a small flash, I just leave it like that. For one more time on. You know, you can fine tune it to your needs and then you can save now or press select again and save later, but whichever way it will work. Now, if you press select, see that? So if you press select again, now I will be changing the timing or the spacing between each of the flashes. So I'm, I have to uh, hold down mode. Okay, and now as you can see, I can leave a very huge gap between each, each of the flashes or lower the gap. See? So I'm going to select something like that. Okay? So save, select, and now I'm going to hold down mode again to enter in this uh, default mode and now it's on and everything is working perfectly. Each of the channels will work at independent times. So whatever time I choose for this one won't affect that one 
and vice versa. So everything is working nice. So that's how you change the modes and the settings for the strobe and beacon lights. Now I'm going to show you how you connect the lights and how you set up the, the other parts of the system. So I've done these connections here. Um, these are very simple just for demonstration. And this is the strobe. So I have six LEDs here. I have uh, two connected in series. So two here, two here, and two here, right? So these are connected, are just two in series, but they are connected in parallel. So um, two is the maximum. If I'm using a 3S battery, two in series is the maximum it will drive. Uh, but then from, from there, you have to go parallel. Um, if you have a smaller plane, you can use one. You can get away with one per wing, so it doesn't matter. But I'm using three here three pairs because it's going to simulate two on each wing. So two, um, two in series on one wing, two in series in another wing, and this one will be on the tail. So it will be, you know, the, the strobe lights as a real airplane. Over here I have the positioning lights, which are red and green lights. So of course uh, the red will go on the left wing and the green will go on the right wing. And these ones are going to stay on all the time whenever they're being used. So that's why they include this heat sink to hold up to, to that temperatures and stuff. And then we have here the red beacon lights. These are going to be flashing. So um, I don't care about using a heat sink on them because they're going to be on just a fraction of a second. And I have two because you, you might possibly use two one on top of the fuselage and another and another one on at the bottom. Um, so yeah, they are in parallel parallel connection as well. And then we have the landing lights. Uh, I have two of them, of course, they are included in the kit, but you have to do the wiring and all of that. And as you can see, you can open this. This lens is really good because we'll focus the light in a very narrow spot, making it brighter and it's a lot better that way and the heat sink will prevent the light from overheating and burning. So we have two of them connected in parallel this time and it works fine. So these are the strobe. We connect them in the strobe. Then we have the beacon. Okay. Then we have the auxiliary one, which is the pos positioning lights. And then we have the landing lights. So we put the landing lights and that's it. So the landing lights won't work uh, whenever you are using manual mode because you need to turn them on using your ready control. Of course, you can reprogram the board to work uh, continuously, but these lights can get very hot if they're, they are being used for a long period of time, but it shouldn't be a problem. I've been uh, testing these lights with these heat sinks on. They work perfectly for long, long periods of time. So let's test this in manual mode first. Uh, let's plug this and see how it works. If you are very sensitive to light flashes and things like that on screen, just be careful with this because this is gonna start flashing and it's not gonna be pleasing for some people. Okay. Here we go. So positioning lights, strobe and beacon lights. So as you can see, these uh, landing lights won't work. Um, but I'm going to connect a receiver, right? And I already set up everything in my rudder control. So I'm going to turn on my rudder control and connect the receiver and all that. And I'll show you how Welcome they work. The receiver has to be powered um, by the ESE or another external source. You won't be able to give power from the board to the receiver. It, it won't work like that, okay? So it's just to protect your receiver and the system against any problems. So I've selected here the channel seven and eight of this receiver to do, to do this. Okay, the receiver is connected, but uh, it doesn't seem to be working and that's because the manual mode is activated. And that's because these two LEDs, green LEDs are on, meaning that the manual mode is engaged. So it won't listen to the PWM inputs. So we have to hold down mode, the mode push button, and now it's working. They are all off because now I can turn it, turn them on with my radio, okay? So with these switches, I can turn 
the lights on, okay, and do whatever I want. And so if I want to always use this mode, then I will save this again. So I'll press save. So if I turn this off, right, and on again, it will preserve that uh, setting, okay, because it's working with the with the receiver. But if the receiver is not sending any signal, it will go back to it will go back to its uh, default manual mode. Okay, let's turn on the receiver again. And okay, so here I have two channels working for this. So I can activate here the strobe. And if I if I do it again, so this these two switches here are three position switches. Let me turn on the lights. So these two switches here and here are, are three position switches. And now I can activate with this one here the, the strobe lights and once again beacon lights. Okay, have to be connected very well. Okay, so strobe on and the third position will be beacon on. Maybe you cannot see there, okay. There you can see. And I can switch off the beacon. So I'll leave only the, the strobe and I will switch off everything. See? So you can program, you know, the which one you want to, to turn on first. You can do it from the radio or even uh, from the code of the board. Uh, but that's it. And for this ones here, you can control positioning lights and then landing lights. These landing lights are really bright, really, really bright. So you can leave them there. And as long as everything is, is without any change, will, they will keep working. So you can control each one independently. Okay, so this is perfect. So that's basically it. Of course, the wiring and all of that have to be the right size for your airplane. You have to put everything in its position. This will go on the wings and so on. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's basically it. Uh, now I will show you some flights I did with one of my airplanes, the Trainstar. Uh, I did that flight some time ago already but that's one of the flights where you can appreciate the whole thing, the whole system working uh, at night.